Welcome back to the Milwaukee Market Update. We're covering real estate news and data and breaking it down to help you understand how it impacts your real estate decisions. Teaser, what is the market like where I'm buying my first home or next home? What to take away this episode? Buyer demand remains extremely strong, even though we had 22% more listings hit this month than a year ago, the same month. Understand your submarkets. We're going to talk a lot about this this episode. No two submarkets are the same. Get hyper focused in understanding what is the specific area you're looking at. And also, let's talk about the importance of the appraisal gap and inspection coverage, especially when you're competing with cash offers or potentially waived inspections as well. And also, how important when it comes to 2 a.m. wrestling are weight classes? <laughs> I've got my opinions. I know Ty does too. <laughs> We're here to give you the info you need to make the right decisions regarding your real estate. Should I buy a home now? Should I be selling? Is the housing market about to crash? Are these headlines I'm reading, content I'm seeing on social media true or even relevant to me? If you're new to this show or returning because you found value in our previous videos, it'd mean the world to us if you would please take a second to subscribe. You can follow us on TyAsh31, Nick Harrington 28 and reach out via MilwaukeeMarketUpdate.com. I'm Ty. I'm Nick. With House Ricks Collective at Compass, your local real estate experts. All right, man. So let's dive into our quick tips. I know you got something for our buyers out there. Yeah, definitely. So my quick tip for this month is don't time the market. Um, we talk a lot about the seasonality of Milwaukee where prices are going to go up in the summer months. Mm -hmm. That means competition is going up as well. Um, that's when the most listings hit. And then the winter months, you typically have some softening of price, some softening of competition. Um, and I think what's super important for buyers right now is remember your why. Think about, do you want to own a home in the next year? And my opinion is if you find that home that checks all of your boxes and that's in the summer or that's in the winter, that's when it's time for you. Um, it's not about trying to time the market and to try to save maybe a couple percentage off of your sales price, if that is in the winter or in the summer. What's more important is finding that home that checks the boxes that you're looking for. Um, and don't try to time the market to the nth degree of saying, oh, well, next month, historically, we've seen prices go down about 1%. Mm -hmm. Think about like long term, what's going to be more important for you versus trying to time the market, especially when we're talking about one to three months, which is a typical buying window for a client that we work with. For sure. I think it's it's very important just to be ready to buy, consistently go through the actions as opposed to trying to time the market, like mm -hmm. you're saying. Because at the end of the day, what's more important as a buyer in today's market, the only thing you can really do to give yourself an advantage is have flexibility around moving time frame. So like focus less on I'm going to like buy right here. This is the best time of the year. It's focus on like your lease flexibility or putting yourself in a position financially speaking to not have to have a home sale contingency and maybe balancing two homes. Love it. <clears throat> Uh, for the homeowner side, uh, this is a question we get all the time is, well, what can I do to get more value out of my home? And most of the time I can describe perfect. I'm like, well, we should probably get like fresh paint, deep clean. Let's take your furniture out. Or if you've got like, newer furniture, we can stage with what you have, but we might want to stage, do all these things. So it shows really well in photography. People come in, it's decluttered. It has your personal effects removed so they can see themselves in the home. That's perfect. Most people don't do perfect. So like, what is like the 80-20 rule? The 20% of what you can do to get 80% of the impact is the first impression room and kind of like just the entryway in general. So like new mulch, some perennials, make like that landscaping look nice as they come in. Don't have a clunky door that's like impossible for an agent to open with the key. Have that thing dialed in. New light switches, new outlets, fresh paint in that first room. Have like some light staging, at least have some furniture in there so people can look at it, have those windows in a good state of repair because most people are most critical in that very first like five minutes when they're walking into your entryway, living room or family room. Mm -hmm. So make that thing dialed in because they get less critical as they go through the home. And they're probably doing a lot of those checks for outlets and windows and everything else right when they first walk in. Yeah, they I love that. It's kind of like first impressions. You know, yeah. it's like if you meet someone for the first time and they have a nice blue polo on and their hair looks really nice, like, you know, like maybe like, I don't know. But yeah, um, like, yeah, that'd, that'd be pretty nice. Yeah. Or like you like with a nice button down flannel look like that's going to be a better first impression than you meet someone that kind of has like rip jeans and a little like dirt everywhere, you it's know, fashionable though. It, true. It is. <laughs> um, but I, first impressions are everything. And this even hits home to me too. Whenever I have a rental property that I'm putting up on the market, I want to make sure that that entryway when they first walk in mm -hmm. looks super nice and clean because the first impression matters so much. Also, it goes to when you have showings of your property 
always strategize with your agent about, okay, how are they actually going to walk through the home? Where's yep. that lockbox going to be? Because that's the door they're going to walk in. Yep. And you want that to give the best first impressions of when they first walk in the home, whether it's coming into the kitchen first mm -hmm. or whether it's coming in a back door and seeing like a nice open space, whatever that looks like, is super critical in my opinion too. To totally agree. And then what do you got for investors? Yeah, for investors, I would say one of the hardest parts about investing and buying, especially if you're out of state, is what I consider to be deal fatigue, mm -hmm. where you're seeing all these listings that are available. You might have a hundred possible listings that are in your buy box. And it's kind of this feeling of how do I even start? Like yeah. I have a hundred deals to analyze and then you get overwhelmed and end up and analyzing. Like, I'm sure the 99th one's going to be the one that's a deal. Yes. Yeah. And so I, I think it's important to, if you're feeling deal fatigue, work with an agent that's going to help guide you or at least provide you in the right direction of how can you quickly cut those hundred listings down to 25, whether that's location, whether that's price point, whether that's condition type of building, because then going from a hundred to analyze now down to 25, that sounds a lot more feasible to me than it does to actually have to analyze a hundred deals when probably 80% of those off the bat are ones that aren't even worth your time to crunch numbers on. Yeah. I totally agree. And like one of the things we can do to help you as real estate agents is like reverse engineer your search because that deal fatigue, like you said, it's like, if you can have like five listings be popping up per week, we can generally predict like, what does five listings per week new coming into your search look like? Well, that's about 25 per month. And over three months, that's like 75. So if we look at sold listings in your criteria as an investor over the last three months, Hopefully it's around like 60 to 75. So we can consistently predict there's going to be like four to five listings that come up, which is a deal a day, mm -hmm. you know, deal a day will get you a really good deal. I was it, trying it to make a different quote, but no, I like it wasn't going to work. Um, also, we're recording in a new area here. We're still in our office, yeah. but uh, we're kind of in like the, the common area here. So Training if you cafe. Any, if you hear yeah. any background noise, if you hear some clutter and some people chit chat and just know that kind of here in the common space, so. Yeah, like a little caveat right. asterisk. We had to get that uh, that glow as you're over there. Uh, yeah, we've got really viewing. nice natural light here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to look real sharp for those who aren't uh, just listening to us. Yeah. You get to see it as well. But let's transition this. So we got some tips all knocked out. What's the story of this month? And, you know, generally, what have you seen this, la this last month? And we're actually going to, like, transition it, not only just, like, this month, but this year. And we always talk about the market globally, you know, mm -hmm. like here in the Milwaukee greater area, all four counties, all clustered together to give us one big data set. We're going to dive deeper all the way down into some like sub market areas that will really help our clients essentially understand what do I need to be competitive there. But generally speaking in the Milwaukee greater area, what are you seeing in the market and what can buyers, sellers, investors expect? Yeah. How's the market? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's good. Well, you, what, give us, <laughs> give us an idea. So I would say it's pretty similar to what we've seen throughout this year. Um, it's kind of, if we look at the last month, it's still very competitive. Um, I've seen a lot of multiple offers on most homes that are in good condition that are priced correctly. Um, I've continued to see, I don't think there's been a single home that I've gone to see that my clients have been interested in that there has only been one offer in hand, it's mm -hmm. kind of like approaching that like five to 15 anywhere in there, just depending on the price. Um, I've started seeing a lot of listings that are intentionally priced low at that fun marketing price that we always yeah. talk about, right yeah. at like a 299K or a 399K, mm -hmm. giving those people with that budget at the 300 or the 400K to give them the feeling that they have a chance on this. And then yeah. they get outbid because of the listing price is just not anywhere close to where it should settle. Um, I've seen a lot of new listings hit the market, yep. but I feel like buyer's demand has still been extremely strong and continues to just take over all that new inventory. Outpace in general, like the actual new inventory we get. Yep. I, I think the biggest change I've seen, not only this year, but versus previous years, is appraisal gap coverage has been bigger because you know the market has continued to uh, be moving quick and prices going up. In addition to that, though, there weren't as many sales last year. So there, it's really hard to find comparisons sometime in an appreciating market, especially if you're looking in an area where there's not as many sales historically anyway, and now there's even historically less. Mm -hmm. So appraisal risk has been one of those things that sellers are trying to handle for. What also has been really working well on the buyer side is getting to home super quickly and pushing the time frame. You know, it gets live on a Thursday Sometimes we can get that showing scheduled that very first day, if not the, you know, the next morning, 
you have to make it a priority to get out there very quickly and work with that whatever the calendar is that your agent has because you know there's only so many hours in the day and write really strong offers just as if you're expecting competition because it likely will come but controlling that time frame because you writing an offer on a Friday asking for a response by the end of the day could prevent that cash offer that waived inspection offer from even having the chance to see the home that's the kind of stuff that works at this time of the year mm -hmm. is essentially doing what you can control, which is getting in quickly, <clears throat> writing good offers and making the time frame shorter for competition to get in. Yeah. And I think all that comes from the prep phase that you've done yeah. as a home buyer to get yourself in a position to be comfortable to do that too. Yeah. Um, where if it's your first home that you're seeing, you're not going to be willing to go above and beyond what you think it's worth because you don't have the repetitions in that understanding that feedback loop that you always talk about of what a winning offer looks like. So yeah. it's all and about understanding the comps versus listing price. Definitely. Like we're not, we're finding out the right range of price of where it should sell based on the comparisons, which are going up five to per, five to 10% year over year. You find a comp from a year ago mm -hmm. and it sold at X, like you will likely be paying more from that. Even if you're the very first offer in the game, yeah, like definitely that's just like something you can expect. But like you said, first listing, you're like, no, I wanted to pay the, the price. I'm at the grocery store. I'm picking out my cereal for, you know, $3.99. That's how much, it, that's how much it's worth. That's mm -hmm. how much they said, right? Just not how it works in real estate. Unfortunately, no. Um, and, you know, all of that essentially flipped the book there. Like sellers, you can still expect with the right strategy, like just disassociate listing price from what the actual home value is. We should, you should be receiving an estimated net proceeds on like what the list price is that we're using and like what we think the home's value is based on the comparisons. But again, we're trying to target marketing prices that get people off the couch into the home writing offers. Mm -hmm. That's like the number one goal. Yep. Anything from like a just investor's commentary or you'd say more or less the same? Uh, I'd say more or less the same. I feel like I have seen a lot more duplexes start to pop up and hit the market. I feel like investors, there's less competition in the investing space especially like it depends on kind of the sub market that you're buying. In. And we're going to talk yeah. a lot about that. Like the whole theme of this episode is we always talk high level about the Metro Milwaukee area. And we mm -hmm. always say it's important to understand the local data. And then we are going to get super local in this yeah. episode and understand like with the different sub markets, but in the investor space, if you're looking at like that 225 and below price point, there's typically a lot less competition. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're looking at that, like 250 and up number, where you're looking at like a Shorewood or an East Side or a River West or West Dallas property, you're going to be in competition. So it's right. kind of all about understanding, like as an investor, what are your goals? Understanding too, I think for an investor, it's a lot different than with the buyer because with, with a home buyer that's going to live in there, that's their home. You know, that's their space that they want to be in. And I think it's a lot easier for a home buyer to kind of feel like they're maybe overpaying, but understanding like we're going to be here for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so that's, probably okay because we love this home and we can see us having a family here and living here and, and, and enjoy all the benefits of just being in this home that we love. For investor, I think it's really important for you to understand what is that top number that you're willing to do? Because yep. if all of a sudden we're in a competitive situation and it's a bidding war, emotions get involved. And for the investor space, it's very important to not to try to separate emotions and understand yep. that the numbers still have to work. So I always kind of had that idea too, of like what's that max number? Mm -hmm that you're willing to go. And sometimes that means that you need to start with that max number too, just to kind of weed out any other competition or offers that we have. Yeah. It's such a like weird inverse reality where it's like when there's 10 offers, you're like, oh, I can't, I can't keep going up, but you're like actually competing against the market value. Like yes. other people that are like competing at the same price where it's like, if you literally listed it the next day, yes, there's a sales cost, but there's somebody that would be like, yeah, I would definitely take that off right. your hands versus when you feel like you've got an opportunity where like, Oh, we're the only offer. It's like almost in the back of my head. I'm like, why is it, why, why are we the only offer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. we must be at is the very peak wrong? of the price already. The comps don't support it. Is there appraisal risk? Like we had a yeah. duplex came up recently where there's just no comps to support what is out there in the price. And it's like, it's an awesome property, but I cannot find a comp over 550, but it's listed at 625. And I'm like, guys, there's appraisal risk and the seller will not budge if the appraisal comes in low. And that's a risk that we, and yeah. not writing me. Like you have to understand just because it's 625 doesn't mean you're getting a steal. At 625, like the value is in the mid 500s. Yeah. And it's a hard reality of like, you're not getting a deal just because you're the only one riding on it necessarily. Um, I want to chat out too while we're on this because it's a competitive market that we're in. Um, what I see a lot of times when we submit offers is the listing agent takes that best offer, that mm -hmm. highest and best offer. And it's kind of rare that I see now, if we're in like a five plus offer scenario, 
that there's a lot of like pre accepted offer negotiation. Mm -hmm. You know, I think like back in the day, used countering, to be, yeah. yeah, like the negotiation used to happen before the offer was accepted. You know, like we submit at this, they counter this, we counter this, we land somewhere in the middle. What I've seen a lot for, I mean, the last year, year and a half is it's really, you've got kind of one shot to make yeah. it happen. Is that kind of what you're seeing here as well? I too? would say a lot of it's 50, 50, I would say it's a one shot where it's like, yeah, they're just going to take the highest and best because they like the terms and everything else. But in some cases when it's you and one other party and maybe you've got best price, but good contingencies, but the other one's got a lower price and no contingencies, sometimes they will talk to those two best offers mm -hmm. and be like, Hey, we're going to multiple counter you. It's not common, but it depends on the seller and like how much do they want to drag it out? How much are they optimizing the offers that they get? So you're almost vying for, I want to be that winner right out of the gate, or I want to earn the right to be in that countering situation to actually have that conversation. And that all comes from like rapport and staying in communication with your client. Yep. Love it. Um, so let's actually like go into the stats to support this. So like you'd mentioned, we're going to start at the highest level. So what's going on in the greater Milwaukee area, really focusing on what our homes selling for year to date, like on the median. But then in addition to that, what are we seeing for months of supply? What are we seeing for supply versus demand and soaking it up? So we can actually talk about what might the sub markets actually have differences relative to like what your affordability is and what the competition might look like as we kind of talk about these inspection coverages, appraisal gap coverages, all the things actually go into a strong offer and like how fast the market might be moving. Yep, so love it. let's start at the high level. This is the Milwaukee greater area, four county area. Right now, median sales price is at 350000 versus 325000 a year ago. This is through the month of May, uh, but actually focusing on year to date. Sorry, we'll go 320000 versus three hundred five a year ago. That's up 5%. So 5% growth in prices here for the Milwaukee greater area and months of supply currently sitting at 1.7 months of supply versus 1.5 months a year ago. So even with new listings being up considerably, demand is keeping pace in general with just a small growth in that month's supply. Four months being healthy, we're currently at 1.7 months. Yeah, Any and, commentary? Yeah, so I would say one thing that's cool about this, um, new listings mm -hmm. this month to a year ago, same month, we're up 22% with yeah. new listings, which is huge because yep. we have such a shortage of new homes hitting the market. And this is really the first time I feel like we've seen a significant spike. And we've been talking yep. about this all year. We're like, we're feeling it. We're feeling it. The data is not showing it. Well, hey, yeah, here we here go. 22% <laughs> more homes available yep. this month versus there was a year ago. It's the same month. Prices are still up and date months of supply is still about the same 1.5 versus 1.7, which means that the buyer demand to me is still strong. It's still driving prices yep. up. Mm -hmm. And these new listings are being scooped up by the buyers that are out there right now. Um, and months of supply, if we remember, that's kind of your metric to determine supply and demand. And a healthy market is at four months of supply. Yep. How months of supply, what that means to me is if there are no new listings that hit the market ever, it's going to take 1.7 months for all of that inventory to be purchased. Yep. So that's kind of just a metric of like how many buyers are out there compared to listings. And we're still very much so in essentially, a seller's market. Yeah. By August 1st, all the inventory gone. Gone. Yeah. Gone. Crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Where'd so, it go? Where'd it go? Instantly gone. Again, buyer demand, even with rates still being around 7, 7.25%, that demand is still there. You would expect that demand to continue to go up if we saw relief in interest rates getting even to low. I'd even say six and a half, six right now. Yep. If you even saw 5.99, anarchy. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're sitting for the, the Milwaukee greater area. We're going to now go into individual counties, starting with uh, Milwaukee County, some of the submarkets, Waukesha County. Ozaki County, following up with Washington County, yep. and kind of compare and contrast again, remind, remind, reminding you that three hundred twenty thousand is the median sales price year to date here in um, Milwaukee greater area, and month supplies at one point seven months. We'll continue to compare and contrast those two. Get to know your market, get to know your sub market, because that's truly what matters. Is if you are only looking at a home in Tosa or only looking at a home in Franklin, what matters is that <laughs> yes, sub market, not the entire sure. Milwaukee area. It's it, Greater Milwaukee area numbers are great to get like a high level understanding of what's happening across the board, but I'm excited to kind of do this with you here. Absolutely. So diving into Milwaukee County, $257,000 is our median sales price up 7%. So price is going up a little bit faster than the whole entire, you know, Milwaukee greater area, 
but the median price overall generally more affordable than what we have for the greater four county area. Months of supply right now are sitting at 1.2 months of supply, uh, which is up from a year ago, but 1.2 versus 1.7. So we're actually seeing more demand relative to the inventory that's out there for all of the Milwaukee County. So again, this includes North Shore, you know, Bayview and th those submarkets. It yep. includes Wauwatosa, some of those most competitive markets we have. West Dallas is another one. Let's go and just dive right into some of these, starting with, I believe we're starting with North Shore. So North Shore right now. And North Shore is going to be Shorewood, <laughs> thanks. Uh, Whitefish Bay, Bayside, Bayside, Glendale. Kind of everything east of the interstate, mm -hmm. Shorewood and up. North of actual Milwaukee proper yep. Yep, and yep. downtown area. So now we look at this. So again, desirable areas, great school districts. Uh, we're seeing that the median sales price here year to date is 536000 up just 1.5% versus a year ago. Now, we are looking at a smaller amount of listing data. These homes do not trade as often and, and sell because of great school district, you know, longer time frames of people holding them versus Milwaukee County in general does have a lot more of that more affordable price point. Mm -hmm. First time home buyer market that people do not stay in quite as long. With the months of supply being at 1.3 months, very similar to Milwaukee County as a whole. <clears throat> I think let's just keep on going through each of these submarkets and talk about the Milwaukee submarkets and kind of compare and yeah. contrast. Love Next up, we have the, I guess I'd call it Wauwatosa greater area. We're combining Wauwatosa yeah. and West Alice. And this is um, hard for us. There might, be a, there might be an outrage. It, out it there. was hard for us <laughs> to kind of decide how do we separate these different areas um, because it, it's just like there's so many different sub markets that you could look at in Milwaukee and you could divide this up. And I mean, if we really wanted to have a deep dive, we'd probably want to have a different one of these for each of the different municipalities in Milwaukee, oh, yeah. but we just don't have three hours to go through all that. I don't think and we want to put people the listeners to stay awake at the that. wheel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, this one's crazy though. Yeah. So we got Tosa and Stalis, West yeah. Dallas. Walk us through it. Um, okay. So the main thing that I'm seeing here, median sales price, 272 K. So um, more affordable on average than the medium home in Milwaukee, more affordable than the North shore area as well. Mm -hmm. The main thing here though, that's insane is your absorption rate, which is your months of supply is at 0.65 <laughs> months. So you're at less than one month of inventory if, in the West Dallas and the Wabatosa area. If no new listings went live for the rest of this month, inventory would pretty much be zero, zero. before the end of J June. Yeah, and then your median <laughs> days on market is four. So yep. typically what that means, if it's listed on a Thursday by Sunday, accepted Monday, offer. accepted offer. Yep. Um, and so I think like it's, this is the most competitive market that we've seen, most competitive submarket of the ones that we've looked at. And so again, it's just super important where if you wanna live in Tosa, you wanna live in Stalis, just understand that the, your, your amount of listings is smaller. So it's also, also gonna be like maybe easier to separate what you wanna see and not, um, but you gotta be Johnny on the spot and you've yep. gotta be same day we're going to see there. Um, yeah, cause it's it's probably the most, one of the most competitive submarkets there is in the Milwaukee area right now. Yeah, and I mean, comparing it to Essentially, our North Shore counterpart is median days on market before it receives an accepted offer being seven. I mean, seven days is still still super quick. Super quick. Yeah, but it's you also go out of town for a weekend. But it's also it. it is still twice as fast in that West Dallas Wabatos market, which is incredibly fast. When we talk about pushing that time frame again, that's the median meeting more, you know, 50% of all the homes sell quicker mm -hmm. than that or get an accepted offer quicker than those four days on market. Uh, the very last piece that we have here, so this would be like our south suburbs. We're kind of bucking them, the south side yep. of Bayview, uh, Cudahy, Oak Creek, Greenfield, Greendale, essentially that like south part. And I think we even threw Franklin into this. So kind of like everything that's kind of around that interstate 43 turning into, I think that's like 41 as you kind of go towards Beloit. Yep. What we have for numbers here, median sales price, 330000 up 5% versus a year ago, and our months of supply sitting at 0.9. Again, comparing it to what we have going on in the North Shore and kind of that Tosa submarket, uh, kind of sitting right in the middle in terms of how quickly things are moving. But again, the context of healthy being four months of supply, we only have a quarter amount of the inventory relative to the demand of buyers out there. Here in this market of Bayview, Franklin, Greendale, uh, Glen, or, uh, Greenfield, moving super quick, median days on market, six days. Mm -hmm. So moving quickly, as we kind of like rack, wrap up what we have here from Milwaukee County, these sub markets, I think what's important to note is all of these markets that are kind of in like 
outside of Milwaukee proper are all moving very quickly. And this is where inspection coverage amounts, appraisal coverage amounts, and sometimes leveraging escalation clauses in uh, specific situations are going to make sense. I know for what we're seeing today is to beat a inspection waiver. These are your markets that you're going to see 10 offers and about 20% of all offers are waived inspections. And it's like a third of all offers are cash buyers. This is where price matters. Even if you feel like you're going above maybe what other people are, or you don't want to waive inspection, which is like, honestly, I understand. Yeah. You have to put really healthy coverage amounts to give that certainty to the seller that, yes, I want my home inspection, but I'm not going to nickel and dime you. And honestly, I'm probably going to eat one big issue if it comes up. Mm -hmm. And the appraisal coverage, what I've seen in the North Shore, which is probably the highest price points where the biggest gaps could occur, we're seeing 5% to 10% appraisal gap coverages. So on the, the median price in the 500s, that is a sometimes twenty five to $50,000 appraisal gap coverage versus if you go look at that Tosa market at 300000 like, you're not looking at as extreme mm -hmm. of coverage amounts in those areas because it's relative to the price point that yep. you're in. Yep. Anything that you want to kind of like summarize as we kind of compare each of these to each other? Uh, I just think it's fascinating looking at these different submarkets because mm -hmm. we always talk about it's competitive, good homes move within the weekend, but this is true numbers and data that backs that up, yeah. that it really is less than five days on market for some of these submarkets. Um, and so it's important to be prepared for this. It's important to start submitting offers if you are wanting to purchase a home this year to get in that repetition of what does a winning offer look like and we always talk about this feedback loop of you want to know where you rank up and where you stack up because yeah. if you write an offer and you were number two that number one buyer now just got their offer accepted mm -hmm. if there's no new buyers that enter the market which there probably will be but your next stop to be is number one if yep. you're writing similar offers so i think it's um it, it's just like it's fascinating for me to kind of see these numbers and compare and contrast and also yep. We've chosen sub markets here that are some of the most competitive in the greater Milwaukee area. I don't think yep. we have one on here that has a higher months of supply or is less competitive than the average of the greater Milwaukee area, at least yet. Um, but if, so if you're looking at these areas, just know that it is competitive. Yeah. And most of these, I would say, are involved with like having some better school districts versus you know, the Milwaukee County. That's just like a known fact if you look up the rankings. Mm -hmm. I think the most interesting <laughs> I have is out of these markets, the most affordable is the Tosa West Dallas market, probably most driven by West Dallas. The more affordable the market, generally speaking, the less months of supply that there are and the more competitive it is because it is at or slightly below the median sales price for a Milwaukee greater area. If you're below that $320,000 mark, if you're at like that 299 marketing price, that's the highest amount of competition with the least amount of supply that we're seeing right now in yep. our market. So something just to take away with what you're currently shopping for. Next up, we got Waukesha County. So Waukesha County, right now the median sales price, 480,000, up 7% er, up in price versus a year ago. Months of supply, 1.1 months of supply, just up slightly versus a year ago, again, lesser than what we have for the entire greater Milwaukee area uh, with the price being a little bit more affordable, uh, at least on the median standpoint than what we have in the North shore. Median days on market, six days before an accepted offer. Uh, first up, we have, you got anything you want to talk about in Waukesha County or you want to dive into no, dive in. Western suburbs. So yeah. Western suburbs, we kind of defined as Menominee Falls, Brookfield, Elm Grove, I think that we tossed in Waukesha in yeah, here as I well. Yeah, New Berlin in there as and well too. New Berlin as well. Thank you. Yep. So of course, you're inside of this market, we've got median sales price four hundred thirty-five thousand, just slightly lower than what we have for the entire county. That's up four and a half percent versus a year ago, uh, and also median days on market before accepted offer five. Moving quick, inventory is low, not quite as low as what we see in Wauwatosa and West Dallas, mm -hmm. but still moving pretty quick and definitely desirable. Yeah, and it's also crazy looking at, compared to 2023 to this year, months of supply last year in the same area, 0.56, half same. a month. Yeah. We're almost at double the amount of inventory, and we're still at less than a month of supply, Yeah, um, which is, it's it's insane. I mean, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. yeah absolutely agree. Next up, we've got Lake Country. So here in Lake Country, we've got a median sales price of 590000 This includes places like... Uh, We've got Pewaukee, 
We've got, I think, a con walk is pulled into this as well as uh, Merton. So anywhere that's like really close to the water or very short driving distance to uh, Pewaukee Lake and mm-hmm. those other, you know, sub lakes that are in that area, 590,000 up 15% versus a year ago. People want that lake life. They do. I don't blame them. I, I don't blame Pretty them nice. a bit. Yeah, very nice. Absorption rate or months of supply, 1.6 months. And this is something that we see as prices go up mm-hmm. again you have less buyers that are able to be qualified for that amount when we're looking at essentially double the median sales price or what's typically, you know, determined to be affordable here in our area at that average amount. So we see that climb, the median days on market being nine. And I even want to kind of like venture into the average days on market. Cause if we take the median, obviously a ton of transactions are going to happen. A lot of them are going to be on that lower end of days until the accepted offer. 43 days is the average days on market before accepted offer because there's probably some million, you know, million dollar, mm-hmm. two million dollar homes out there that they're waiting for like that one person from moving up from Illinois, relocating to the area that is going to buy that two million dollar home. Just going to imagine right now, 7% interest rate, there's not as uh, many people yeah. looking to buy that two million dollar <clears throat> home. So that drives the average up. But again, it's it's much easier to see the median of, of like what's the typical right person going to find. Yeah, it's also interesting too seeing your average list price here is seven hundred eighty k compared to the median sales price of five ninety. So it's about a two hundred k swing, which to me means there's a lot of high priced inventory that's pulling up to make your average. You got a couple outliers of those yep. one million, two million, three million dollar lake homes. Yep, that's driving that up. Um, yeah, absolutely agree. And then next up, we've got uh, McGuanago and Muskego, so kind of like that South Lake area. We have a median sales price of 465000 up 10% versus a year ago. And again, our months of supply, 1.3, kind of right around like what we're seeing as being normal here in the Waukesha County area. Uh, days on market before an accepted offer on median is six days. So again, a lot of consistent we're seeing, a lot of the same numbers here. Waukesha not having as much as that variability between like where you're looking. I think I kind of see it overall. It's like most people are like, I either want to be like closer to downtown in those West suburbs, or I want lake life. Mm -hmm. Those are like two kind of sub markets that we kind of bucketed into three. Yeah. All competitive. If you're looking in Waukesha County, it's all moving faster than what, you know, the Milwaukee County is going on average, less months of supply. uh, And honestly, more or less very similar to what we had a year ago. Yep. Prices being higher than the median as well. Next up, we got Ozaki County, just north of the downtown area. This includes, you know, Cedarburg, Mequon, um, I think Port Washington, Polson, Grafton. Grafton, thank you. Mm-hmm. Median sales price up in Ozaki County, we've got 510000 with a month of supply of one and a half months. So honestly, one of the healthier pieces of inventory that we're seeing here, uh, that sale, median sales price of five, 510000 is up 14% versus a year ago with our days on market before an accepted offer being at 16. This is probably one of the bigger outliers I think we've seen. For of sure. Essentially days to get that. Now, I'm just going to start like throwing out anecdotes of what part of that might be. Um, sometimes you're not as close to amenities. Uh, I would also say that there's probably a higher penetration of uh, private well, septic, like some of those things that like some people are like, oh no, definitely not doing private well, definitely not doing private septic. There's some of that exists out in Waukesha mm-hmm. County for sure. I think they've had a faster progression into going municipal water, municipal sewer, because I know Waukesha is well known for having uh, pretty hard water. So those are some of the things I know I've seen of yeah. those being no's. Yep. Um, seeing the 25% price increase, or excuse me, 14% price increase, I think this is one of the highest that we've seen yeah. of the submarkets that we've pulled, with it being, this is Ozaki County that we're looking at, right? Yep. Um, and then uh, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of new construction going up there mm-hmm. as well, too, whenever I like, just Absolutely. pull searches of kind of the Mequon, Cedarburg, Grafton area, you do have a higher concentration of new builds out here too, um, which kind of changes that data, I would say, a little bit also. Yeah, which definitely would impact your average days on market, median days on market, as well as, you know, that obviously unfolds through active inventory relative to the demand. And sometimes those new listing, you know, those brand new construction get listed when they're still just studs. Right. So they physically can't sell any faster than that. They're just out there so you can advertise. They'll have one done, spec home, so you can kind of, Get the idea the of it, marketing, photography. Definitely a good call out there. Next up, we've got, uh, this would be Cedarburg, Mequon. So kind of like that sub-market within Osaki. Mm-hmm. We're sitting at median sales price, 542000 up 8.5% versus a year ago. Very similar 
days on market at 17, and then months of supply, one and a half months, uh, very similar to Ozaki County overall. All right, so we are looking now at... Washington County, so our last yeah. one. We don't have any like specific deep dives. Again, I think a lot of the clients that we serve here on Houseworks Collective are closer to downtown. Mm -hmm. Definitely a lot of first-time home buyers, move-up buyers. So we got this very last one as we get further out. I mean, you can be about an hour away from downtown Milwaukee as you go into Washington County. Yep. Median sales price, 410000 flat two a year ago. So again, as you kind of move further out away from Milwaukee, if you're not near lakes or those amenities, we're not seeing as much price growth. 410000 flat two year ago, months of supply, one and a half months. Uh, median days on market, nine days. So as you get further out, and especially because we do have the higher price, longer days until we're actually seeing an accepted offer, and months of supply being a little bit higher as well. So most of the submarkets we looked at, as we kind of look at this, did not include places that were close to like downtown areas, to amenities. And in some cases, you know, we kind of excluded Milwaukee proper in some of these portions to look at some of the hottest markets we have here. Our total months of supply right now is at 1.7. None of these submarkets reached 1.7. So we can definitely confirm that those areas that aren't as close to downtown areas are not as desirable right now. People want to be closer to things to do, mm -hmm. better school districts. Those are some of the, like the sub kind of ideas that are going on here. But also having some of those new construction areas, like you said, also driving some of the days on market, month supply. Any other like uh, thoughts that you have around this deep dive of these different areas? Yeah, so let's talk about how I think first off, it's super important when you're looking at a different neighborhood or submarket to have this data in front of you or just like to mm -hmm. talk about it mm -hmm. um, as a buyer or a seller, just to understand what the market looks like. Let's look at this market, like a, a, the data sets we've seen here. Mm -hmm. What's this kind of telling you about your predictions for the future? with some of these, these more competitive markets here? Uh, for the more competitive markets, they're going to continue to be competitive. People want good school districts. They want to be around stuff to do. I don't see, like, in these cases, like the Wabatos West Dallas market at 0.6 months in supply. We could 10x that inventory and then just barely be getting into a seller's market. 10x. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a significant amount of inventory that would be needed to even meet the demand that we have today to have prices stabilize to stop go up. Yep. So like, that's how I kind of try to communicate to people is buyers want to know when I buy in one of these locations, that's super hot, super competitive next year is the bottom going to fall out in my, I'm essentially going to be underwater mm -hmm. in my house that the, the indicators here and that are showing no, none of the locations that we deep dive today are going to have signs of that happening the next year. I agree. Even if inventory doubled overnight. Yeah. And I think uh, I talk about a lot about this with clients too, that if trends continue, it's going to be hard for you to be upside down in your purchase. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, the only way that that's going to happen, at least here in Milwaukee, is there has to be some major economic collapse almost <laughs> for that to happen. Yeah. You know, like something big, like what happened in 08. Um, We'd have to have all of our Fortune 500 companies in the Milwaukee area. Elite. Like there are markets out there that are hurting. For sure. That are down that don't look like Milwaukee. No. And we always talk about that at a higher level of like Milwaukee is doing so well, at least in terms of like if you own a home, you're feeling mm -hmm. pretty good about yourself right now. And yeah. even if you bought a year ago, still feeling pretty good. But there's markets out there that have been impacted with this. Yep. So definitely. And I yeah. think Florida is one that I see headlines of a lot where prices are going down. They're very much in a buyer's market now. Um, and I think a lot of that's because people that move there aren't there because of the right reasons per se. It's more of like a secondary second yeah. home market. They move there during COVID. Um, and now that things are kind of stabilizing, returning back to normal, there's people that are selling also uh, in hurricanes, insurance, all those things for <laughs> yeah, Florida for specifically. Sure. Cost of living just going way higher yeah, than but, what we would have here in the Midwest. But with we're not really risk. seeing that in Milwaukee, you know, mm -hmm. and I think like it's important to remember if you see the national headlines or there's specifics about the national prices going down. It's because you have most of the inventories on your coast of California, East Coast, West Coast, mm -hmm. and that's going to be where the mo most of the, the inventory is. Mm -hmm. It's going to have the biggest impact on your average number. But yep. you got to look super, super specific, micro, to understand how this is actually impacting you as a homeowner. What's happening in California mm -hmm. has some impact, not a lot. What's happening here in Milwaukee, if you're a homeowner in Milwaukee, is going to have the most important impact on you. For sure. Totally agree. So what we got next here, take a quick break and we'll dive into uh, some news articles kind of local here to our area. Sweet. All right, kick us off. Let's do some <clears throat> news articles. All right, news article number one. So 
I don't know if you guys saw this this last weekend. We've got the uh, the RNC coming yeah. here in July. Yeah, middle I think of July. We're le- le- just under a month away yeah. from that actually happening. Um, Trump came out with a pretty big <laughs> statement about Milwaukee, <laughs> and uh, quote unquote, he said it's a horrible city. Um, so you could imagine how people in Milwaukee have a lot of pride about living here. Oh, you know, yeah, I for think sure. I see a lot of four one four tattoos. That's the area code here. Um, people love Milwaukee that are from here that live here, um, and so. There's been a lot of backlash, yeah. as you can imagine. The mayor has came out and kind of put up his uh, defense in terms of what Trump had to say. Um, something that's a little bit more fun is uh, there's now a, a local brewery um, that's making a response to uh, to Trump's comments, and um, they actually are launching a new beer that's branded. That uh, let me let me pull up the photo here of this. Uh, Mobcraft, oh yeah, is beginning to brew a not so. Horrible City IPA. Nice. Um, so kind of fun. You know, some good banter there happening. Um, but we kind of want to talk about some of the, the things that we like about Milwaukee. For sure. Because, um, you know, I think it's it's very much a sleeper city, in my yeah. opinion. And I just had a client that came in town here. He lives in the San Jose area. Um, we just went out to drinks and dinner. It was like two weeks ago. We were just in the third ward, kind of exploring different pockets of Milwaukee. And it, it's amazing to me to hear people that live in California come to Milwaukee and say, this is insane. Like we don't have anything like this. And it's just Mm -hmm. like the river that goes through downtown and the third ward and all those areas where we kind of take it for granted. And I think it's all about perspective too. Like we hear people that live in California, that's gotta be so cool to live out there. Granted, it was like a beautiful summer day when he was here and he wasn't here in zero degree winter, which we have to deal with for six months of the year. Um, Um, I I think before we even go into like the article you pulled in of like, one of the things people love are festivals and we can talk about some of the stuff that's coming up because we're going like right into festival season. It's like you can be downtown and you've got bucks, you know, bucks games, all the energy that comes around like big sporting events. You've got, uh, you know, arts like uh, the dance, the orchestra, all those things. You've got the festival grounds. You've got literally a beach in Bradford beach mm-hmm. where there's 40 volleyball courts that go six days a week of like five o'clock until nine o'clock volleyball games going all summer long, which is amazing. So like you've got the like beach culture, that beach life. There's so many amazing things about that. But if you want to go like 30 minutes outside of downtown, all of a sudden you're in lake country, Mm -hmm. lake living, slower pace, still got the amenities, restaurants, everything you could like get from like a small town in Florida. Those things are awesome. That like you can get that downtown feel, not as much congestion and traffic. In 30 minutes, you're like, out in the country, peace and quiet, whatever the heck you want. Yes. Those are like one of the things I think people are like, oh, it's like green. It's not like filthy. Yeah. (laughs) Like it's just great. Yeah. One thing he mentioned was like the downtown area is super clean, which I guess like I've never thought about that before as it being clean, but it it really is. Um, The golf scene, I'm a big golfer. The golf scene here is incredible. I was back in Des Moines like a month ago and we went to a couple courses. It's just not the same. It was what Milwaukee has to offer. Um, and I used to live in Scottsdale like years ago when I came back out here, I was posting on my, my Instagram stories of golfing and that's what my buddies all said. They're like, Oh my God, it's so green there. And it's like, I I guess, I guess you're right. Like I kind of just take this for granted, Mm -hmm. but like, it's very, it's a very convenient city Mm -hmm. in the sense that everything you need is kind of within 20 minutes, no matter what, like if you're in your car for longer than 20 minutes, it's cause you're going from like the furthest point to the furthest point possible in the metro area. Um, and it's just something that I think like we kind of take for granted that mm-hmm. you hear an outsider come in that's from a, a major city that you think like that's going to be awesome. And then to hear them say the good things about Milwaukee, it's kind of like, you know, I guess we do have it yeah. pretty good here. Yeah, and there's other cultures that of like Milwaukee that I don't participate as much, but like Oak Leaf Trail, which comes all the way down to, you know, the lakefront here, like Veterans Park, everything else, Brady Street Bridge goes all the way up to like, Mequon, Cedarburg, mm-hmm. like up to Libby, Montana's and even further, like you can do all these different activities and people make the most of their spring, summer and fall. But there's a lot of people that make the most out of winter too. And there's a lot of things you get to do, whether it's, you know, uh, a lot of people love going up North. They like doing uh, their snowmobiling, mm-hmm. skiing, everything else. Like, yeah, it's not, it's not Colorado. <laughs> it's not Colorado, but, but like you can go do whatever the heck you want year round yeah. and you get like a taste of everything. Yeah, I and agree. Speaking of a taste of everything, let's talk festivals because, like, there's literally a, not a million, <laughs> but no, there's, but, like, a hundred probably. Yeah, so I, I just pulled up the festival calendar for this year. And that's one thing I th- think Milwaukee does a great job of is there is always a festival of some sort going on throughout the spring, summer, and fall months in Milwaukee. Uh, I counted it up. There, I think, is 101 festivals on what I'm looking for here. It's on visitmilwaukee.org. Yep. Um, 
my girlfriend and I, we were at Locust Street Fest two weeks nice. ago, just a pop-up in River West area. Um, you got the big ones that happen too. I mean, you obviously have Summerfest, which is like a two month long music festival. <laughs> Three weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> Three weeks, right around 4th of July, music festival. I think they've got like five mega stages, tons of sub stages, paid stages, big names. Yeah. I've heard this year, I heard it's a little bit soft yeah. on the attendance, but hey, that's just like my personal taste. So. Um, and then you've got like German Fest, uh, Polish Fest, Taco Fest. I mean, everything, any, any region of the world, there's probably a festival for it. Um, I went to German Fest last year, and uh, I wish I would have worn Lederhosen because I was <laughs> definitely the only person not wearing it there. Yeah. Um, but do you have any plans coming up this year to go s to a couple festivals? or Next week we'll go to Cedarburg's Strawberry Festival, so they're kind of in one of our deep dives. I mean, they shut down the street. It's like one of those classic like main streets. It's uh, Washington is the name of the street, and it's closed down for like – it's got to be close to a mile. And it's both sides and the middle, full vendors all the way down, live music. It's got a good bar scene there on that street, which is kind of like a elevated downtown. Yeah. Like, you know, we're, you know, like people that are a little bit grown up and moved out of the, you know, downtown <laughs> area go to. And it's always a great spot to stop. That's one of our favorites. We also love Brady Fest. Yep. I know you live right off Brady's, Brady, so you love that. Pet Fest, also on Brady Street, mm -hmm. is fantastic. I think what blows my mind with how many festivals we have in Milwaukee you would almost think it's like, okay, there's probably just like average attendance at these things. Slammed. And they're crazy. <laughs> and it's like to have a festival every weekend and have it be packed with people where you're like swimming through bodies, walking from place to place, it's really fun. Yeah. And it's, I think it kind of is like, we're all cooped up here in the winter for a couple months, you know, and some people are out like biking or whatever yeah. in the winter, like with the big knobby tires. And then when the, <laughs> when the spring, summer, and fall here hits, it's like we've been cooped up all winter Let's get outside. Let's do things. Um, and the city just does a phenomenal job with all of these festivals. Yeah, and there is actually festivals every month of the year. But definitely you can see peak festival season, June, July, August. August yeah. being the biggest one. December only has one Stout Fest. We'll have to make it there this year. Yeah, uh, that, that'd that be a goal. Hit every single festival. Uh, 101 festivals in one year. Do you think that'd, we could do that? Uh, anything's possible. True. That's awesome. Um, well... With that, anything that's new with you? I mean, you just uh, asked me the festival. I know I'm going to, um, what the heck it's called, uh, Strawberry Fest yeah. next week. Any festivals that are on your list slash uh, um, anything that's new or anything you did this last so month? My, my folks are coming in town for the July weekend. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we love to do when they came out last year for the, it wasn't their first time, but first time we did this, we rented kayaks. Oh, yeah. And we kayaked up and down the river. And we stopped Bar at hopping. probably like five or six different bars and restaurants there. Yeah. Um, that was super fun. We started off just doing a half day rental. And then we were like, let's just never return these. So we extended it to a full day. Yeah. And we, we returned them when we were done. Of course. Um, but excited to do that. Have my family come in here. Um, just got back in town from Oshkosh, yeah. actually. Yeah, so I had my uh, bachelor party this last week and just a couple days ago. So just uh, fully recovered sleep-wise and otherwise <laughs> uh, from that weekend. Uh, definitely, I'd say highlights were, you know, some pontoon uh, yeah. boats, you know, going out to some of the bars. Oshkosh is very well known for a uh, bar scene and the yeah. uh, amount of alcohol consumed there in the area. Well, uh, I guess we, it's called Osh Vegas. Osh Vegas. Which there that was go. new to me. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely. see it. I get it. You can, you can definitely Less see Elvis it. Less Elvis impersonators there than Vegas, but still for Wisconsin, yeah. very much has that kind of feel. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess I'll, just for the sake of the show, I'll say this is the pinnacle was, uh, you know, a nice 2 a.m. wrestling match between <laughs> yourself and I. Because uh, what was the comment you said to uh, my future brother-in-law? Yeah. Um, so I used to wrestle yeah. back in, in high school a little I bit, you tell. know. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I'm kind of a lean 172 right now. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't eat as much as I, I should maybe. So, yeah, you know, I was feeling good, feeling confident. We were having a, a fun night. Um, and I was just kind of in that, you know, like a little roughhousing mood, I would say. So, yeah, I was, I was telling your brother-in-law, Rob, that if, if Ty wants to wrestle, I'll pin him in, in 30, seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and we did a solid three-minute <laughs> match. <laughs> Full, just, you know, riding, points scored, rolls, couple flips. I got put on my back. You got put on my back. But inevitably, yeah. ended in uh, Nick Harrington getting pinned. Yeah, so, it did. It did. Again, not my, <laughs> what's that? No footage. No, there's no footage in no. Osh Vegas. What stays true, in true. Osh Vegas stays in Osh Vegas. But. Yeah, pretty humbling moment. Um, but I think it, you know, it just makes you want to have a repeat for my bachelor party. Oh yeah, train um, to have a little rematch maybe <laughs> yeah. with you. I mean, we had the full thing. We had uh, you came in with a, a robe, uh, yeah. a walk walkout out music, uh, bodies hit the floor. I yeah. came out with, uh, uh, I think, downfall of us all. You know, little 
uh, day to remember, I believe. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it was elevated at 2 a.m. in the yeah. morning. So. Yeah, I'm still a little sore, still a little bruised up. Always some healthy competition. Yeah. Uh, now, the feedback loop is you got to put a little bit more pounds on. Yes. i got to get a little better conditioning. you got to trim down, too. i got to get bit. some conditioning. The weight well, class wedding is, coming up. is not fair here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. But, uh, well, if you found value in the information about uh, the local deep dive, uh, some of the festival scene, as well as uh, what it takes to be a 2 a.m. wrestler uh, that we discovered here in the Milwaukee area, please subscribe, hit that bell notification And uh, that way you can know when we post our next market update. Thanks, and we'll be back again next month with the Milwaukee Market Update. Bye.